So I want to talk to you about how to clear uh, content that's floated. Now, what does that even mean? Well, if suppose that we have, I've got a red box here, which is actually an HTML5 tag called section. Okay, and let's suppose that I've got two divs in there and I want to make these two divs columns. Well, there's a bunch of ways we can do this. If I want to keep it simple, I can float them. Okay, we can also use, you know, inline block. There's a lot of ways to get it done. So if I go in, let me do something like this. You can see that I've got my, my section div and I've got my two, my, sorry, my section tag rather, my do two divs here. If I go to the CSS and I find the column, these, I have a class applied to those two divs. And I just do something like this. I say, okay, let's float left. Great. If I take a look, you're going to see what happens. When you tip it, when you float things, a lot of times they are taken out of the flow, meaning they're taken pretty much out of the object they were inside of. So this section right here literally collapses because these two are now floated next to each other and are pretty much just kind of hanging out on top, sort of like a, a Photoshop layer almost, okay? And what we used to do to fix this, there's a lot of ways we get this done. We used to use a clear fix tag, uh, uh, class rather, or the simpler method was we do something like this. We'd actually go into the, the thing, the box, like the red box, it's the section tag. And right before the end of it, we'd put in something like this. We'd say uh, BR style equals clear, and you could use a div for this. You can, I mean, there's a million ways that this used to get done, okay? So we do something, I misspelled style, that's awesome. We do something like that. And that would work. It would basically stick in a clear, uh, uh, an object rather, a break, and then say clear both, make sure it goes below both of these floated columns, and that's awesome. But we really don't like to inject or insert code like this, okay? It just makes it messy, and there's other reasons. But so what we use these days is we use something called a clear fix. It's a, a micro clear fix hack, if you will. Let me delete this, and I want to show you how we get it done and how it works. Well, first of all, that break, the way that worked, I'm going to go over to Illustrator real quick and just kind of show this. This is interesting, I think. Here's the section, the box, the red box. I'll just call them boxes. Who cares? You got a red box. I throw these two boxes in there and I float them. Well, they pop out of the box, basically. They're taken out of the flow and the red box collapses like this. Okay, so they're still hanging out there, though. So what we would do is we take the break or the div and it would be as wide as the container. And we'd say, hey, you go inside the red box and clear everything. So essentially, it'd be sort of like saran wrap. You'd take this box, stretch it down, and then smash this in there real quick at the bottom. And it would literally butt up or hit all the content and say, no, you have to clear everything. You got to go below everything. And that's how we'd get the red box to go around everything. Okay. Well, these days, we can use something like this. Once again, standing on the shoulders of giants here, but you're going to see that this is uh, Nicholas Gallagher and there's other people that have uh, uh, contributed to this, made further along, et cetera, et cetera. But you can see that this code right here is using what's called before and after. Um, and this is a pseudo class. It's a way for us to add something in there without having to literally put it into the code. You're just applying it using CSS. Now, what is a pseudo class? You're going to see colon before, colon after right there. Um, technically, eh, we're not going to go there. Anyway, so before and after, what does it do? Let's just talk about that real quick. Okay. Well, suppose I have a paragraph. Let me get back over to my, my stuff here. I've got a paragraph here. You can see Brian Wood. And if I go to design, uh, we can see there it is right there. Now, suppose that I want to, every time I have a paragraph, I want to put something before it, like uh, uh, my name is, or I want to put like uh, PDF in parentheses or some little indicator uh, for myself. Well, what we could do is if I go to the CSS, go to the CSS, and we have like, let's say a P style. If I go in here and put P colon before using what's called a pseudo class, we can add content. And we can do just about anything we want, really. Add content like this. We can say, uh, my name is colon. What that's going to do is going to say, okay, a, a pseudo class of before or a pseudo class of after is saying, we're going to take and apply this styling or add this content before the content of the P. So it's before the content or after the content if we use an after pseudo class. So if I go to live view and take a look right here, you're going to see if I go to design, my name is, okay? And sorry, it's not uh, on the next line, but anyway. <clears throat> 
So every time I add, let's say I do something like this. Let's say every time I add, let me get out of live view. Every time I add another paragraph, I hit a return and I say, uh, Joe uh, Smith, John Doe, hey there. Okay, these are all paragraphs. Go to live view, take a look. My name is, my name is, my name is. You're gonna see the pseudo class taking effect. Now, IE8 and above have are pretty good with these. They're not too bad. If you're concerned about IE7, IE6, you're gonna to have to go do some fixing. There's some shivs and different shims and different things you can use, but anyway. So here's what we do to fix our problem. Let me go back, let me fix up what we got. And I'm gonna to go to split view and I'm gonna get rid of the content before. We don't need this. We're gonna use the code on the site here to get this to work. Now this is a this is code for uh, IE6 and later if you want it to work. There is a shorter way to do this. What you can do is you can go to nicholasgallagher.com micro clear fix hack. You can just copy this stuff. And the idea here is that you're gonna take this .cf and you're gonna put in your class name for the div, or let's say if it's a section, you're gonna put in section instead. So what I'll do is I'll just copy this stuff it's basically, I'll, I'll explain it in a second. And I'll go in and I'll say, okay, I'm gonna put it after my section, that's the red box. I'll paste it there in my, this is in my CSS file. And all I wanna do is, I'm gonna take the section and I'm gonna make sure that this says section rather than uh, .cf. .cf is just a placeholder. Now I'll probably use a class instead, you know, to the section, because if I have more than one section, it's gonna apply them to all, which might be fine, it's your call. But I'll go in and change all of those. There we go. Now, what's it gonna do? Okay, well, this bit of code down here, this zoom one thing is, like it says, it's for IE6 and 7 only, so if you care about that, that's cool. This uh, this triggers the, the has layout uh, to tell it to work. Up here, this is the big stuff. These two right here, this is what we need. This is actually for Opera, um, this content thing, and anyway, the, the space itself. So we can use this. Once we put that in there and I go live, it is fixed. That's it. We're not inserting code in the HTML. We're using CSS to get this to work. Now, if you don't care about IE6 and IE7, let's say you're IE8 and above, you can simply just use something like this. Let me just paste this instead. It's kind of a combination of the two or three. So this right here, you can put in your class or whatever it is for the, the div that's containing everything, colon after, you're gonna say content, basically nothing, Display table. Display table is telling it to be a t essentially a table or display as a table. And then that thing that's going to go after the content, which is down here, like the break we, we did before, it's going to say clear both. So that's it. That's essentially how we get it to work. Hopefully that makes sense. It's using pseudo classes. It's not injecting code and it's keeping things nice and simple.